Hello there and welcome back to my channel. Today I will be ranking and ordering Doctor Who Series 1. I have reviewed all 13 episodes and all 10 stories, and I shall be providing you with a rundown of how I value them in the series. As well as this, there is a visual for you, there's an art time lapse that will be shown in front of you as I go from the lowest scoring story to the highest. I prefer to review and rank these by story rather than by episodes. I see it as basically if you were to review a chapter in a book. I feel like I need to review it as a whole, a whole condensed and finished story rather. Uh, just to remind any viewers who aren't aware, I review stories using a scoring system. I have 10 areas to cover. Concept, writing, production, visuals, music, cast, threat, ending, emotional response, and my overall likability for this. Each carries a score out of 10, therefore everything adds up to a score out of 100. If you want more in-depth reviews for each story, they are already available to her uh, and have been uploaded, so please feel free to check them out. So without any further delay, at number 10 is episode 7, The Long Game, written by Russell G. Davis and directed by Brian Grant. This story, as I mentioned in the review, is considered really the dud of the first series, majoritively. It's honestly not the best of episodes. Entertaining and stylish in some areas, it really is only there to make the connection for the setting of the finale. This episode also has the annoyance of Adam Mitchell, a useless and somewhat naff character with potential that they got rid of, as much as he was an attempt to do something different and show a companion that isn't worthy of travelling in the TARDIS, I feel that this was really a wasted opportunity. For the cast, a talent above this whole story, it's a shame how weak this is in comparison to the rest of the series. I valued this story pretty low since I first watched it, and still do, and I have become somewhat susceptible to its unique sense of directing, but this ultimately does not save it. Overall, I gave The Long Game a 60 out of 100. At number 9 is episodes 4 and 5, the two-part story Aliens of London and World War 3, written by Russell D. Davis and directed by Keith Boak. Russell's first two-part story is remembered by me for its character moments. This is the story where the cast are heavily developed and gain a sense of direction, but silly and odd touches that lightly entertained me as a child becomes off-putting nowadays. With a pantomime leading villain, some unfortunate but respectably ambitious costume designs with scary and sometimes off CGI, this story is better when it's really just about the characters. I used to really like this story, mainly because I thought most of it was funny. I still will happily watch it, it's more the production and visual element that deter me away from putting this story any higher. Um, if I was to choose which episode is better, I would probably go with World War 3. It's far more serious and takes away the dafter tone from the Slovene family. Either way, I scored this story a 73 out of 100. At number 8 we have episode 1, Rose, written by Russell T. Davis and directed by Keith Boak. Some might be surprised that this story is there from the bottom, considering that this is the reintroduction of the whole show. I'm not saying it's bad or awful, I believe it just suffered from a few silly scenes that I really agree with. Like the Mickey Bin altercation, the clearly fake plastic Mickey which took away from a really interesting reveal, and the bitter way that Rose left Mickey right at the end. I even believe the villains, the Nestine and Autons could have suited better screen time and could have reflected their classic style of just being a villain, the way like the one in Spearhead from Space, the Auton in the blue overalls going through the forest hunting down that man. Uh, these are small, uh, pettier features that I didn't really agree with that deter me away from putting this higher up on the list. I find this story entertaining though, that has a superb cast and I value it for that and the way it reintroduces the show magically. Anyway, this story gets a 73 of 100. At number 7 is The Unquiet Dead, episode 3, written by Mark Gattis and directed by Eurus Lin. This story has been a grower on the appeal factor in the last few years, a gothic horror with sad and sinister moments, a great way of involving a historical figure, Charles Dickens, and a great way of testing the Doctor and Rose's dynamic, bringing in some themes of morality with an evil enough villain, the Gelf, to put everyone in danger. The episode, in comparison to the rest of the series, to me, suffers from a slower pace and the missed opportunity to discuss the morale of the Gelf's reassumed needs, and maybe an ending that slightly feels like a cop-out. The story has grown in likeness for it, uh, and a few years ago probably would have been a lot lower. Anyway, the Unquiet Dead scores a 77 out of 100. 
At number six is The End of the World, episode two, written by Rusty Davis and directed by Eurus Lin. This much like The Unquiet Dead has grown on me through the years, however this story has done it considerably more than most others. Once was the days where I used to find this story terribly dull and boring, but now it's darker than I imagined, quite authentic in its execution, a lot of fun to watch. Such a morbid setting and concept with a murder mystery twist, great acting from everyone, and just a high entertainment factor. I, the, this story, you know, is let down by a predictable villain. As much as I like Cassandra, she has too much focus on her to, you know, not be the villain. This story had more to share, and I wish they had gone down that direction. This story would have probably been at number 9 or 10 a few years ago, so this is a really big improvement for it. Anyway, I scored this story an 81 out of 100. At number 5 is episode 6, Dalek, written by Robert Shearman and directed by Joe Ahern. I would expect quite a few people would disagree with how low this story is, even though it is at number 5. I know this story is well loved and valued highly as an episode in general, as well as a Dalek episode. I see the worth in it, it's just the production that doesn't fully sell it for me. This is where you can see the visual suffering and the cracks in the production are slightly there. They are able to do it well in parts of the story, but not all the way through. It also suffers from Adam, which, you know, to be honest, is interesting enough, but could have easily just been another kill for the Dalek to gain. I feel though that the story is effective, testing and personal for the Ninth Doctor, a great Dalek story with a powerful ending. There's much to like, but I liked a lot of other stories a bit more. I don't want to value this story as overrated, but I think I just don't gravitate towards it like a lot of other people might. Anyway, I scored Dalek an 81 out of 100. Uh, like what I did with Aliens of London World War 3 and Rose, I go down each of the scores until one is higher. These both had the same likability score, so I went down to the ending. The ending for this story was far superior than to the one of the end of the world, so of course this is why this is above it. Next at number 4 is episode 8, Father's Day, written by Paul Cornell and directed by Joe Ahern. This story would probably be higher for a few people, but I'm surprised, to be honest, it's as high on this list. I've always found this episode to be a tad depressing and therefore a tad uninteresting. This story is averagely more scored than a lot of the others, and this also has you know a higher emotional factor to it as well surprisingly good visuals have lasted over a lot of time moodier morbid tones and a great sinister atmosphere i felt minor parts of the editing and a touch of logic when it came to how the rest of the general public didn't seem to notice the reapers as they were getting killed off could have really amplified my appreciation for it it's still a good story though not one that i always have an eye for and i have realized you know I really should have, it's so obvious. This story has a tiny involvement in Jackie's influence to change her mind in the finale story anyway. So, don't know how I missed that, I'm an idiot. Anyway, I've scored this story an 82 out of 100. At number 3 is episodes 12 and 13, Bad Wolf and The Parting of the Ways, written by Russ T. Davis and directed by Joe Ahern. The finale comes into the top 3. This story was, you know, one I have often avoided mainly because I've never you know, been the biggest fan of finales and thought it was a tad confusing. However, out of all the finales, this has to be one of the best. This series finale masterfully you know, helps to connect the rest of the episodes together. Great writing, great performances and grand consequences from a strong threat of the Daleks and overall tense and testing story for the whole cast. I do tend to prefer episode 12 over thir the 13th. I feel the pace of the Parting of the Ways is a tad slower in comparison. The whole story, though, you know, completes the whole Bad Wolf story arc well, is beautifully honourable, farewell to the Ninth Doctor, and a bold introduction to number 10. For a finale, this achieves a lot more than most others actually have, um, even after 11 other series. Anyway, I've scored the Parting of the Ways bad wolf um, an 86 out of 100 runner up for series one at number two is boomtown episode 11 written by russie davis and directed by joe ahern i'm not sure where a lot of people would place this story but frankly i think it's great such a cool idea a really great villain margaret is such a standout from the slitheen two-part story giving her her own story to try and get revenge was a right move for russell 
This story has a small connections to the rest of the series, making it a must for this arc's continuity. Plus we get a quartet that we're never going to get again, and that's tragic. We've got Ninth, Ninth Doctor, Mickey, Jack and Rose, such a perfect team, so that's something to be cherished. What, I, what kept this story from the top spot was more my emotional response to it, and the ending. I, it doesn't really have the charm as a story that's clearly above it. If anything, the ending was merely a useful ploy to Rose for Rose to have the motivation really in the finale. Either way, it's bold, unique, and a story that I really believe deserves to be reconsidered if you haven't watched it much, or you don't really see the point in it. Boomtown from me gets a 90 out of 100. Of course, the top spot at number one, if it wasn't already obvious, is the two-part joy episodes 9 and 10, The Empty Child and the Doctor Dances, written by Stephen Moffat and directed by James Hawes. This story, I think, is at the top spot for a lot of other people when ranking series one, and I can see exactly why. It's creepy, clever, and just science fiction at its best. As well as this, this introduction to fan favourite Captain Jack, and what a fine introduction it is. Stephen Moffat crafts a twisty script with creepy themes and well thought out scares, using children, the war, and gas masks to play on a zombie horror trope, and that's a perfect idea. I'm not always a huge fan of Stephen Moffat as a writer. He's clever, but at the same time, his style is tad annoying and badly unpredictable. But when he's given time, especially with a smaller, you know, amount of responsibilities, especially when it came to when he wrote episodes for Russell's era and then when his own, uh, he really creates a story of peak perfection. And to be honest, he's had one for each series. My overall opinion on this story has hardly shifted. I've always enjoyed this story and I've always found it more captivating and more entertaining the more I watch it. I don't see this story ever being moved in the ranking of series one at all, uh, let alone in the show's uh, overall a series ranking. Uh, I was to, if I was to choose which story, uh, episode of the story I preferred, I would say I prefer episode 10, The Doctor Dances. It finishes the story off beautifully well. Overall, The Empty Child and Doctor Dances scores a 98 out of 100, literally two marks away of being the perfect story for me. Anyway, that completes my ranking for Doctor Who Series 1. Here is my complete list. I wonder how mine compares to the likes of others, similar or too different. Like I said, if you want any further coverage of each story, uh, check out each of my separate reviews. I hope you've enjoyed this ranking and the ARP timelapse. Comment if you agree or disagree, like and subscribe for more. I will see you again for another review um, of Doctor Who, uh, of course, of the TV series. The next one being the Christmas Invasion and for another art time lapse. Thank you for watching and goodbye.